Hello, my name is Alec Jones, and today I'm going to be talking to you about inorganic polymers. Your first question may be, what are inorganic polymers? Well, I'll tell you. An inorganic polymer is a polymer that lacks a carbon molecule anywhere in its structural backbone. Here are three quick examples of inorganic polymers that you may or may not have already heard about. Polysiloxanes, polyphosphazines, and polysilanes are three examples of inorganic polymers. We'll be going into more detail about other inorganic polymers later throughout this presentation. As far as organic compounds go, it's important to know that they can be broken up into two subcategories, natural and synthetic. Natural organic compounds you may already know about from your standard biology classes, DNA, RNA, saturated fats, etc. These are things that help the human body grow and function. And synthetic organic compounds are compounds that you should definitely know about if you're a plastics engineering technology major here at Pitt State. These are polyethylene, polypropylene, polystyrene, nylon, ABS, etc., etc. Inorganic polymers can be broken into two groups, homochain polymers and heterochain polymers. Homochain polymers contain one type of atom in the main chain. For example, polysilane is a type of homochain polymer. Heterochain polymers then obviously have more than one atom in the main chain. Heterochain polymers can be broken into four groups, SI-based, P-based, B-based, and S-based. If you're not up to date with your periodic table, SI stands for silicone, P stands for phosphorus, B stands for boron, and S stands for sulfur. So the first inorganic polymer that we'll be taking a more in-depth look at is polysilane. Polysilanes are an example of a homochain polymer. They are silicone based as you can see. They are polymerized via condensation reaction, and some properties of polysilanes are heat stability, heat resistance, lack of water absorptivity, and they also degrade under UV light. Some examples of polysilanes are televisions, so they emit display light, and photoconducting applications in electronics. To the right there under the television you can see an example of a photoconductor Photoconductors are often manufactured through the, with the use of polysilanes. Polysiloxanes, also known as silicones, are the, other, are the next inorganic polymer that we'll be looking at. Silicones are heterochain polymers. They are silicone based, obviously. They are polymerized via condensation polymerization. Some properties are heat resistance, cold resistance, chemical stability, flame retardancy, and they have good electrical properties. Polysiloxanes are technically a hybrid polymer. I could make an entire separate PowerPoint presentation over hybrid polymers, but typically people group hybrid polymers with inorganic polymers when discussing the two. There are many applications for silicone, as you're probably aware of. Medicine, personal care, automotive, cookware, and many more. Polyphosphazines are the last inorganic polymer we're going to be taking a look at. They are a heterochain polymer. They are phosphorus based. They can be polymerized two ways. One via a two-step method or two via living cationic polymerization. Some properties of polyphosphazines are high crystallinity, Hydro, high hydrophobicity, radiation stability, high resistance to degradation such as chemical and mechanical degradation, and here are the applications of polyphosphazine. They are used to make fuel cells and they are also used a lot in the biomedical industry for things such as synthetic bone, tissue regeneration, vaccine delivery, and other uses. 
This is because polyphosphazine does not react negatively or dangerously with the human body and it is safe to use in the biomedical field. And that is all I had to talk to you about today. Thank you for listening.